In this video, we'll discuss how to choose a random value and then use that value as the duration for a timer trigger. The technique of referencing in Experiment Builder is not limited to image resources and data source columns. It generalizes to all properties and can be used in nearly all aspects of Experiment Builder programming. Any property that is displayed in the Properties panel and that is not grayed out can be edited to make a reference to some other aspect of the project. So far we have seen references to data source columns be used to change the image files and locations of these images from trial to trial. But references can be used in lots of other ways too. In this experiment, we want there to be a randomly selected duration between the offset of the queue and the onset of the target for each trial. A technique we can use in a case like this, where we want to choose a random timer duration for stimulus asynchrony purposes, is to make a reference to the value of a variable node, and then use an update attribute action to change the value of that variable before the event that references that variable happens. Of course, as we saw in the video on behavioral data logging, in cases where you are collecting data from the participant, you'll need to set the value of the variable after that event happens. For the timer in this experiment though, things are different, as we are not waiting for the participant to do something. Instead, we just want to randomly select a duration and set the timer's duration to that value. To do so, First, we use a variable node to store the value that we select for each trial. In this case, we've renamed the variable to SOA duration to reflect the type of value that it will store. Using a variable node not only gives us something we can reference from the timer's property, but also gives us a record of the value that was chosen on each trial. The values of variables are automatically written to the EDF file and are included by default in any of the results files that are used in the experiment. So using variables to store information gives us a record of the value that the variable had on each trial. Variable nodes, along with data source columns, become trial variables in Data Viewer, which can be exported in any of Data Viewer's report options. You can find more information about how trial variables can be used in Data Viewer in the Data Viewer video tutorial series. The update attribute action called reset variables at the beginning of the recording sequence sets the value of the SOA duration variable at the beginning of each trial. To see what an update attribute action does, you can click its attribute value list property or simply double click the node itself. This will bring up the attribute value list, which allows you to change the values of properties in your project. In this case, we are setting the value property of the SOA duration variable. So on the left side of the row that we use to set the value, we make a reference to this property. Because Python is the scripting language of Experiment Builder, we can use a little Python trickery to choose a random value between 500 and 2000 in steps of 100. So the possible choices would be 500, 600, 700, etc. up to 2000. We can insert Python syntax for choosing a random value in this way on the right side of the row. In this case, we can use the random.randrange method. In Experiment Builder, Anytime you want to set up a property in a way that is not a simple value or a simple reference, you need to add an equal sign at the beginning of the value that you're using. So since we're executing a Python method, there's an equal sign at the beginning. For the Python method rand range, you specify the bottom of the range, the top of the range, and the step size. Note though, the second value in the list which specifies the top of the range, is non-inclusive. So, if it were set to 2000, then the highest possible value it would return would be 1900. To ensure that 2000 is a possible choice too, the top of the range is set to 2001. 
The remaining three rows of the attribute value list are resetting the values of some behavioral data variables, and we discuss the details of those in another video in this tutorial series on behavioral data logging. Finally, to make sure that the value of this variable is actually used to specify the duration of the timer SOA trigger, we make a reference to the variable's value from the duration property of that trigger.